I really enjoyed using DeepNote this quarter, but it's not the standard place to work with these kind of Python notebooks. And I think it's important I point out some of the more famous alternatives to DeepNote, especially in case like right now, DeepNote works really well, even at the free level, but maybe it won't always be free. Whereas I think Jupyter at least will always be free. So uh, let me show you some of these alternatives. And I think Jupyter came first in this ecosystem. So uh, this would, like starting this would work a little differently if you're on a PC, but the end result of how Jupyter looks will look very similar. So I think the easier one to understand is Jupyter Notebook. So this is what Jupyter Notebook looks like. So it opens up right now a file system like this, and let's just go to the most recent uh, notebook from our class. So this was from Monday of week nine. And you can see it looks a lot like a deep note notebook, although this would be running fine even if I was not connected to the internet, I believe. And so uh, let's try uh, executing some of these commands. So, okay, it took a few seconds, but now if I run it again, it'll be instantaneous. And in general, this will work faster than how Deep Note works for most things. And so this all, all works very similarly to what we saw in Deep Note. So like, for example, for i in range 10, hey, let's practice using f strings. So let's print f. Uh, number is i. Okay, so the, this works very similarly to, uh, to how DeepNote works. Okay, let me delete this. And one problem that I have is the shortcuts are different. So there I tried to use Command, Shift, Delete. But instead, for Jupyter, you can like click outside of the cell and then hit X. Okay, now let me save it. And let me close this. And let me quit Jupyter Notebook. So uh, that was Jupyter Notebook. Uh, let me show you Jupyter Lab. Okay, that's, I think eventually I started to like it better, but I also feel like at first it's a little less user-friendly. So a big difference is you'll always have this file browser on the left, even when you're inside the notebooks. So let's go to the same notebook as before. Okay, th this is looking fine. And I should be able to execute this same as before. And now I should be able to, for example, display taxis. Okay, well, works the same as on DeepNote. So that's Jupyter Lab. And if I wanted to upload, for example, the Spotify data set here, I could do that probably by like clicking and dragging or maybe by hitting this, I guess this upload files button. Okay, good. But Let's save this and let's quit. So that was Jupyter Lab. And both Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook run entirely on your computer. So that, that also makes them a little harder to install. A nice thing about DeepNote is you didn't have to install anything. Uh, last one that's maybe more similar to DeepNote in that it runs online, so you don't have to install anything, is Google Colab. And Google Colab, I think, is a little more widely used than DeepNote, but I've always found it a little harder to use. So let's just create a new notebook here. And for example, for i in range 10, print i. And you execute these cells using shift plus return, just like you do in DeepNote. And here are these. And... Again, it's pretty easy to share this with other people. I, I don't remember if it's quite as easy to collaborate simultaneously on Google Colab as it is in DeepNote. But uh, the main reason I tend to prefer DeepNote is at least the last time I seriously tried Google Colab, it was a little less intuitive to me how to upload files. Okay, unlike here where you can just upload, for example, a CSV file over in this folder section. Okay, so I just wanted to, in this video, provide a few alternatives to DeepNote. Uh, these Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Lab, which run on your computer, and Google Colab, which runs in the cloud, like DeepNote does.